the more you put stuff in your head, uh, and less in the script, and you have a tape recorder which records the half an hour interview. But but make it like a story when you ask the questions, even at home when you do this at home. Like you know, so what did you have for dinner today or lunch today? Start with that. Is this what you have every day? You know, oh, that sounds pretty healthy. Or, or think about something in their cabinets. Oh, you have this, you know, yeah. you have such and such in your cabinets. Yeah. Or, but, yeah. you know, when you go into the kitchen, well, you know, what do you think about when you go looking for a snack? When you get hungry, what do you typically do? I'm working on a project for PepsiCo, which is focused on baby boomer um, consumption and purchasing patterns, and in particular, how those change when kids leave the home, so as parents become empty nesters. So a big part of our project is based on ethnographic research that we're going to be doing, um, both sh actually shopping in grocery stores with people and following along as they're putting things in their cart and talking to them about why they're making those choices, as well as um, in-home interviews with people, getting into a little bit more of the specifics of you know how and why their lifestyles have changed um, during this period. And so in today's meeting, we were reviewing the interview um, screeners that we've been working on with Nathan and Robbie to get their guidance on th and thoughts on um, you know how, how those can be the most effective tools for us. And, it's been a great opportunity to work with the faculty. We meet with Nathan and Ravi once a week in addition to um, some team meetings that we have other times throughout the week. And they're always available for us as a resource um, via email or, you know, they're right in the building if we need them. Um, but they've been great in being a source of direction and sort of inspiration and providing guidance, but without, um, you know, telling us exactly what we need to be doing or, you know, we have a lot of flexibility, but they've provided a great you know, guidance. So far I think the most fun has just been the excitement of working on a topic that hasn't really been explored before. Um, you know, Nathan and Ravi told us we're going to be the experts on this for a couple months at least until someone comes along and knows more, but no one's really digging into this question right now in any um, sort of way that's public, and so it's really exciting and fun to be working on this challenge that doesn't have an existing answer. In the beginning of the project, to kick things off, we did a lot of academic research. Um, and this was reading a lot of different articles um, and really just trying to dig down into some quantitative data. Uh, the next step after that was trying to, to leverage a lot of these ideas that we saw um, in the articles and in papers um, and really see them on the street. So this is where we went to the grocery stores and really just started talking to people as they were doing their shopping. Um, we've taken it one step further now and have started to go into people's homes. Um, with them and really just sit down and chat with them for a bit uh, about their, the changes in their lifestyles um, as well as their shopping habits um, and how things are working out um, now that their kids have left the house. The general flow of these interviews starts with some general background information to get an idea of just who we're talking with and a lot of this involves uh, the, their careers, um, the, the number of kids they have, what the, where their kids are, just to get a sense of where they are in their life. Um, after that, we move a little bit further into their, their lifestyle changes and um, in, in terms of the free time that they have, things they're doing with that free time, uh, and really just trying to get an understanding of the before and after of, of when their children left the house. Um, after that, we, we dive deeper into their actual shopping habits and really look into why they're buying certain things and um, why they're consuming um, others. And a lot of this is uh, ha has changed and a lot of it has not. So it's, it's really interesting to see uh, where those changes take place. What brands people are buying aren't necessarily important at this point, but it's why they're buying those certain brands. So, you know, is, it, is the brand healthier? Is it because of the price? Is it because of the packaging or the advertising? Uh, those are the things that really matter for us right now. And um, in the later stages of the project, we'll take a more direct approach and really apply these higher level kind of white paper um, lessons that we're learning um, and apply them to PepsiCo. Project's going great. Um, we're, we're definitely making progress. We're preparing our midterm presentation right now that we'll give once we get back from break at the end of March. And um, this, this has some high level insights um, that we've learned and things that we want to explore a little bit deeper uh, as we move into the later phases of our interviews. Tomorrow we're presenting our project uh, at PepsiCo's head headquarters in Purchase. Um, so today we're just really working with one of our faculty advisors to refine the presentation and to make sure that we can uh, convey all of the, the key insights that we've worked on over this semester. One of the big challenges was kind of compiling all of uh, the information that we had. Typically uh, just one to two, person, one to two people uh, participated in each interview, so we all kind of had different perspectives, we'd all talk to different types of people. So kind of bringing that all together and trying to understand where there were findings that kind of clustered together. And that's kind of how we decided what our key insights should be. After we'd identified those key insights, 
then it was um, kind of determining how we were going to communicate that and then tying recommendations to them. I think it's good that we have uh, three second years and three first years, so I think that's kind of added a little diversity. We have, you know, kind of consulting. I worked in CPG, so I worked in the same industry. We have two people with communications backgrounds, which is really helpful. We actually have someone who um, comes more from finance, so I think that diversity has been really important too. I think it's a great experience because it's so different from everything that we're doing in classes. It's much more like what will be happening in the real world and most of us are, have worked for at least a few years. So we have some experience with that, but it's kind of an opportunity to continue that while you're in school versus going to class and working on group projects and handing in papers. This is more the way it would be in the real world. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna make it through the slide eventually. Um, okay, so in this empty nest stage, parents